Hi there, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. I was going through my orchid collection despite the list that I made previously regarding ASAP orchids to be addressed. The weather is clearing up and I'm extending that list on other orchids that I need to address. And I wanted to make a follow-up on my Dirty Lekka video before I address those orchids, otherwise I won't have examples to show for. But I just wanted to show you the size of the bag <laughs> that I picked out Dirty Lekka, all the shards, everything that was kind of broken that I felt was of no use in my orchid pots. And this, the amount is, is substantial, absolutely ridiculous. But uh, yeah, so this is everything from two bags that I would think have no business in my orchid pots. I'm using them for other things. It's not like it's a waste, but in case you didn't see my dirty lekker warning video, this is something I find not conducive for growing orchids in self-watering, and I consider it dirty lekker, although it's not. It's also been boiled and cleaned, but the brokenness, it changes the density arrangement in the pot, which affects the oxygenation, which clogs up everything. There is no spear packing guaranteed with this when you have it. So not useful for self-watering and lecker. However, let me just address other things about dirty lecker and the side effects and the possible consequences of having used that. I'm gonna bring up some orchids bit by bit to show you. Dirty lekker is not just what you saw just now. Dirty lekker is also lekker that has not been leached enough, that has not had time to soak and release its minerals where you don't exchange the water for clean and fresh water over and over again until you get a very low TDS reading, having soaked your lekker in a bucket fully submerged with clean water. I have extremely bad well water. My RO water comes out at 11, sometimes two. Now that we've had a lot of rain, it's coming out at two from my deposit, which is awesome. I've never had those kinds of numbers. 11 is my RO water. So if I can leach my lekker out in the RO bucket to about 60, then I'm quite happy to have about 50 parts per million left, so to speak, as a mineral deposit, whatever is left over, whatever the lekker leaches into the RO water. When I started building this collection three years ago now, I got orchids coming in three times a week five orchids, 10 orchids, one order, 60 orchids. And I was buying lekker and cleaning lekker at a rate of knots, but only boiling it and getting it into RO water. And by the time the orchids arrived, I was using that lekker and it wasn't even soaking maybe for a week, maybe a day. And still, despite the fact of having boiled it and do the sterilizing process, that lekker, even after a week, let's just say, if it was a good week, that lekker is dirty. And let me show you the effect of dirty lekker. Now, moss is a good thing, and I have no problem with that. But mineral buildup is not a good thing in self-watering in semi-hydro. No mineral buildup, that's why we speak of flushing a lot. However, this, uh, I hope you can see on the example, maybe this isn't a good pot. Let me get you another one. Let's try this one. I've got a Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex here, but it has similar signs. And you can see the white markings on the Lekka, like that, like that, there. Same here, and definitely right there. And look what it's doing to the roots. Okay, you can say, shame on you, you should have done it and changed it sooner. Yes and no. Based on the rate of knots I was bringing orchids in to build this collection, I didn't have the time for one. And secondly, I thought with the amount of flushing that I do, I'll take care of it. So here's my warning, that if you use lecker and you don't reduce the parts per million of the lecker 
and leach out those excess minerals, whatever that LECA comes with, no amount of flushing is going to flush out those excess minerals because at the same time, you have to consider that you're cultivating your orchids and you will be fertilizing them. And then this happens also to the roots. So take it from me that if you are doing semi-hydro, if you are using LECA, make sure that you have your parts per million dialed in to such a low degree that this doesn't happen on your roots. Mineralization. Now I can say my root tips burn because of my dry layer on the top, because of no wicking. And that is true, but this is an example of what a root will do if it touches a lecker bead that has too many minerals in it. And this is not because of over fertilization. This is because my lecker wasn't clean enough when it went into the pot. So there is a classic example of this is not what you want to have happening in your pots. I know it's exciting to get the orchids in and get them situated and sorted. And I didn't know any better at the time. I wanted to clean them up. I thought my lecker was clean. I didn't consider taking a TDS meter and measuring what the total dissolved solids are in the water as the LECA is leaching. For me, it was oil, rinse, into the bucket, I'm done. Not the case. Another thing that can happen, especially with a weak orchid. I got this orchid, she was very weak, now we have blooms. So yes, three years later, blooms. But I am wondering, I am wondering that if I have a weak orchid and I put her into already oversaturated LECA, the new roots that are growing won't stand a chance with the mineral in the LECA itself. It's a very, very unhealthy environment in the pot. And that is why I'm saying I could have stalled my orchids because my LECA and the pot and climate was not conducive to forming, developing happy roots. If you get a weak orchid, it's already stalled, there's nothing you can do. Maybe this is not a good example, but I want to bring attention to it because one thing is a species taking its time to get acclimated. Another thing is how are you doing it in the pot to help it as best as possible. Dirty LECA is not one of those factors that you should be doing based on my experience to help a weak orchid get established and acclimated quickly. This one here might be a bad example as well because now I've just flushed it, oh dear. But I'm going through all the orchids I need to address so it came to my head I need to do this video just to warn people not to take the cleaning of LECA lightly. Here as well, same situation, an epidendrum cross, same as the one in the back. And in this case, I had already picked off all the surface layer of the LECA previously because of how much moss was growing also on this pot. And here you can see the same thing. You see that new root that actually grew because it was here. It didn't come in the pot like this. But look at the mineral buildup around the root. And an orchid like this in my collection does not get fertilized for that to be allowed to happen. So again, I did a lot of flushing. There is no way to remove that amount of mineral contamination, let us say, in order to clean, not leached lecker in a pot through flushing once an orchid is in the pot. I have another example, but wait, there's more. My Bulbophyllum community pot. Let's move, there we go. Now, this might be a little bit more difficult to see, but these orchids were coming in fast and I was just super eager to get them potted up. Let me see how I'm going to show you. Look at this mineral crystallization on the roots. My Bulbophyllum, Elizabeth and Buckleberry. Old roots, okay, old roots. But look how bad. Those are salt crystals. New orchid, old roots, okay, old roots, but bad lecker. 
I did not fertilize this orchid, there was no point. She arrived with absolutely no roots. And look at that. And it's all throughout the pot. Let me take you off the tripod, let me show you. Can you see how the crystals have really manifested themselves? That is not fertilization. The orchid was not around long enough for my fertilizer to take that kind of an effect. And over the years, I've been taking a cotton swab and taking off the mineral as it leached and wicked its way up the pseudobulbs. And that, again, was from the contaminated lecker, for me, contaminated dirty lecker that I put into the pot. We have some new roots here, but you can see how that is still in effect from years and years and years ago. You can also see that my next growths were not big as the previous because I stopped fertilizing. I wanted to flush the excess minerals out. There is no way. There is no way that this can be done. So this is of course one of my ASAP orchids and when I pulled it out to start working on it, I thought, no, hold up, first things first. I need to show you this in case you find yourself in a similar situation as me, you're buying yourself new lecker, you're doing a transition or you want to be potting up your orchid into fresh media because tis the season, please, please don't make the mistake that I did to be over eager and over anxious in getting your orchids into the lecker without leaching the lecker thoroughly, thoroughly first and getting it down to at least a 50 parts per million in the bucket. That's the water in the bucket. That's what it should have as a minimum. Lower than that, even better. But in my case, I will take 50 parts per million. My beautiful zygote also went through the ringer. And here you can see the old mineral buildup on the Lekka beads three years ago when I got her and just, I didn't want to say threw her in the pot, but looking at this, you would think, well, she didn't care, did she? I care, I didn't know. So with the zygote, maybe I got away with it a little bit more because it is a terrestrial, the roots will grow down as opposed to aerial and doing the epiphytic thing of growing up and around and you have to kind of help them along to get into the pot. And the zygote, maybe I got away with it, but look. Let me see. Let's get you. You see that be like a piece there? Yep. And that is not fertilizer. So my bloom just put the focus on. Great. <laughs> but that is not fertilizer there. Trust me, the amount of flushing this orchid also gets. Being a terrestrial, me rescuing her wanting to make her survive, bringing her through the worst part of my abuse. This is not fertilizer buildup. So in conclusion, it is nice to be able to get your orchids cleaned up and into the leco because that is what we want to do and get them started. But please, please don't do what I did. Measure the pH in your water after 24 hours of cleaning it. Quick, quick rundown of how I clean my lecker. First of all, I rinse it off when it comes right out of the bag. Just give, get rid of all the dust and all the, the powder and everything. Then I put it into RO water because again, my water is so bad and I boil it. A small batch I will boil for 10 minutes because I want the heat to penetrate through every size of the lecker beads. And a small batch for me is like, let's say, one pot like this 15 centimeter pot that for me is a small batch a large batch which is like a full bag in a big big soup pot for example i will boil at 30 minutes that is me bringing it to a boil that's not me it's hot 30 minutes later i'm taking it off the stove no boiling rolling boil you know like you do with soup bring it to a rolling boil and then I count 30 minutes and I do stir on occasions so that 
whatever is floating around at the top might not be as hot as what is at the bottom of the pot. So I do stir. I want the heat to penetrate every single lecker bead, no matter the size. Once I've done that, it is a little bit too hot to handle. So I wait until I can handle the heat. I don't want to burn myself, so be careful. But while the lecker is still hot, do not let it cool off. While the lecker is still hot, rinse all that gunky water, and you'll see how gunky the water is. Rinse that out, flush the lecker out with hot water. Make sure the water that you use is as hot as your faucet has the capacity to deliver hot water. Do not flush, rinse with cold. Then the hot lecker goes into cold RO water in my case, because my water is rubbish. I will not soak my lecker that I've just tried to leach in my well water. Then I wait. And the reason I am so pedantic about saying, make sure that you rinse it with hot water and then shock it by pouring it into cold water, it's like blanching vegetables. Whatever is hot and expanded due to the heat, pores, etc., will shock shut. And in that way, the dirty, scummy water is not going back into your lecker beads while the lecker cools in the pot that you boiled the lecker in. I'm hoping that this makes sense, but I've noticed a huge difference in how my lecker gets clean faster by doing it while everything is hot and rinsing with hot water and then shocking the beads by pouring them into cold RO water once they have been through the rinsing process. Then I measure my TDS once I've got the lecker inside, knowing that my base TDS is 11. And immediately after I pour my lecker into my RO bucket, I measure the TDS in the water and I take a mental note. Next morning, I will measure the TDS again, and usually it's gone up by 100, 120, sometimes 200. I empty all that out, I rinse it all off, and then I fill the bucket with fresh RO water and put the lecker back in. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, until I get down to a 60 parts per million over an extended period of time. And for me, that would be a week. My parts per million has to stay at 60 for at least a week for me to know, okay, this lecker now is leached enough for my purposes. There's also something I wanted to mention is that I use plain, plain RO water for boiling and also for having it submerged in my bucket. I do not use vinegar, I do not use lemon, I do not use bleach. All of these components are absorbed by the lecker beads and it is my opinion that no matter how much I rinse, I do not know if I've gotten all of it out of the bigger lecker beads, how long does that take as opposed to the smaller lecker beads? So for me, it might be a little bit more long-winded and more tedious to get the lecker super clean by all the soaking and rinsing and soaking, but at least I'm guaranteed that there's no residue from vinegar, bleach, or lemon in my water or in the lecker, which could then eventually leach into the pot and then I have no control of what the pH is in my pot. I'm sorry how long this video has gotten, but before I address the pots that I've just showed you as an example, I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention. It's been on my mind and I can sit and type away at comments and say, oh, it'll be fine, do this, that and the other. And I'm thinking there are so many details, so many details of what can go wrong in the pot and what cannot be achieved in the pot if you're putting lecker in that has a parts per million of 400 or 500. So thank you very, very much for watching. If you did watch all the way to the end, I really, really appreciate it. And while all that was going on, I hope that you enjoyed my beautiful Zygo Blooms. Poor little guy. More forgiving with a rubbish lecker because semi-terrestrial. That's why we got away with what we got away with and the roots go down and are not epiphytic. Still, no excuse, no excuse. Thank you for watching everybody, I appreciate it. I hope that uh, if you have any questions that you feel free to mention them in the comments below. If you have any additional comments with regards to cleaning up LECA for all of us to take advantage of and learn from, please also leave those in the comments below. Have a wonderful day, please stay safe and take care.
Bye.